What is going on, guys? Money Webby here, back again on Monday. Got a nice five game slate here tonight. I got it broken down for you with my favorite six plays, my money six, hoping for um, some great plays here tonight. A little bit disappointing with some guys. Last time out, we had some risky plays that didn't pan out. The game flow did not go the Wizards' way. So, those two players on the Wizards were absolute duds. So that was kind of annoying, but I think we'll have some better luck here tonight with some better options. And um, yeah, I got my sixth guy. So before we get going, if you can go ahead and drop in a like, drop a like in the video. I'd really appreciate that. Let's try to get over 70 likes on this one. If we can hit that, thank you. It means a lot. It really helps me out. Let's hop right into it though. So the guy that did pretty well for us last time out was DeMar DeRozan. He had a really slow start, but he really got it going. And from the second quarter on, uh, was close to a triple-double. Two games in a row where he scored with a triple-double, just one rebound and one assist off. He's been playing a lot of minutes. And this is another good matchup here, going against the Phoenix Suns. Team that plays at a pretty fast pace. Their defense is not great. Uh, DeRozan, I think, will be that leading force in the office, offense <laughs> again here, where he's able to facilitate be pretty active on the glass and um yeah i think he'll be able to get us get us over 40 dk points again here and he can approach 50 plus as well it has that kind of upside another high scoring affair here so i'm gonna go ahead and lock him in there as that first guy i want to go with damian lord there's a lot of value on this portland trailblazers team here tonight because they have so many injuries cj mccollum already ruled out they made a trade uh traded away kent Bazemore. um so they're their depth is really thin because Trevor Ariza is not playing tonight as well. So they're really thinned out on the offensive end. So I think Damian Lillard is going to be, a, be able to carry the load offensively here. Um, had a really good game scoring last time out with 34 points, but had a, a fluky stat line of zero rebounds. I think I'll be able to get more rebounds considering averages four on the year. Um, the assist rate should be pretty solid again here because his usage rate will be up. And I'll have to play a ton of minutes here. Um, against the defense not that is not good as well. D'Angelo Russell not known for his defense. So I think Damian Lillard can definitely get the better of him. So I'm going to go ahead and lock him in there as my second guy. I'm going to go with DeAndre and another guy here that should benefit from some extra minutes with Aaron Baines doubtful here for tonight. Um, Aiton is already trending up in the right direction with his minutes. If you look at his year-long minutes, he's averaging 31.2. Um, but the last three games, 33, 35, and 36 minutes. And then you add in the fact that Aaron Baines is not going to be likely playing here tonight. So you could definitely get around that same minutes here, around 35. And uh, pretty solid game flow here against the Spurs, like I mentioned before. Should be pretty high scoring. I think this game should stay close as well. Um, so at 8,300, the, the one bad thing is that Kelly Olenek is coming back here tonight. So maybe it limits his, limits his shot total a little bit. But I still think he has big double-double upside again here. Um, this guy is a rebounding monster when he's been given extra minutes. So I think he can have a nice ceiling here again. Um, if he's able to rack up the rebound. So I'm going to go ahead and lock him in there as our third guy. The nice thing on DraftKings is that he has power forward eligibility, so a little bit easier to work around that. And I'm going to go with the Son Whiteside. Like I mentioned, there's a lot of value on this Trailblazers team. Whiteside, another guy that could get some extra run as their um, center depth is really not there. They traded for Caleb Swan again to give him a little bit extra depth that he also is not playing tonight here just because – he was just traded recently. And if you look at his last three games, when Whiteside is given extra minutes, this guy has huge upside. I mean, 37 minutes, 36 minutes, and 32. He did struggle in this OKC game, uh, but I think that was just kind of a fluky game. And he's averaging a big double-double on the season 15 and 14. And that's just with them getting 30 minutes per game. And like I said, with the recent uptick of minutes, he could have a monster game here against the defense that hasn't been good against centers as well. And we're getting him in a value uh, because he was or did perform pretty bad last time out with 25 DK points. Just based on this price tag and his recent trend up and um, minutes and his upside, I think he could be pretty chalkier tonight, but I think he's definitely worth it because I think he honestly could be one of the guys that kind of determined to slate as if he goes off for 50-plus DK points at 7,500. You're going to need him in your lineup. So I'm going to go ahead and lock him in there. As our fourth guy, I'm going to go with Shabazz Napier. Um, I've always liked this guy when he's been given opportunities. He definitely has a natural scoring ability. Um, he's been a little bit up and down recently, um, but when he is on his game, he has some really good um, nights. So he had 29, 
two out of the last four games. Also had some 30 point efforts um, three games in a row, like 37, 39, and 36. His usage rate has been pretty good. Um, and at 5,100 against a Denver team that is banged up, so their defense is a little bit um, out of sorts, I would say. Like once you put in some bench guys working with the starters, their rotations on defense aren't going to be as crisp. And um, they do have Torrey Craig starting and he won't be on Napier. He'll be on Jared Culver or, or another wing player like Wiggins. So that could limit him um, or those two players, whoever he's on, because he is a pretty damn so- solid defender. Um, so Napier could get some extra looks with that in mind. So at 5,100, um, definitely a potential good value because he could get over get over 30 DK points, which he's shown the ceiling to do. So I'm going to go ahead and lock him in there. And like, a, um, if you didn't see that, Jeff Teague was traded, so obviously Napier has an easier just floor of getting those minutes on a nightly basis. Now for another potential value on the Trailblazers, Gary Trent Jr. coming off a career night with 30 points on the field, mainly due to CJ McCollum being out, so he got some extra run. And I've always liked this guy's game. Um, watched him a little bit in the summer league when he was balling out. He just seems like he has a, just a good touch Um for his shot like he's just really smooth with his release and everything like that i think he just is a natural kind of score so i think if he's given that opportunity again here tonight he could definitely pan out i mean at 3200 doesn't need to do that much to return value he should be able to get some extra run maybe they'll put him at the three a little bit i mean uh they're really thin at the wing position with uh ariza being out or, yeah, Reza being out at who they just traded for, and they traded away Kemp Bazemore. So they really need some extra run at the three position and the two position. So I think at 3,200, Trent, if he can just hit a few more shots here again, he can definitely give us some solid run and be able to give us some solid value. So I think he's worth the risk, though, because his upside is so big if he's able to get hot from the field again here. So I'm going to go ahead and lock him in there as our final guy. So you got Damian Lillard, DeMar DeRozan, DeAndre Ayton, Whiteside, Napier, and Gary Trent Jr. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, obviously, some big news that they'll watch out for is the Celtics with their two injuries and Jalen Brown and Kemba Walker. Like, if those two guys are out, we saw last time out for the Celtics that um, Marcus Smart and Tatum both had huge nights. So, obviously, they could be potential value plays um, if, if Kemba Walker and Jalen Brown are both out again here because they're such big parts of the offense. Those two pieces that are like the two top scores on the team and Jalen Brown obviously Tatum's right there with Jalen Brown but Kemba and Jalen Brown are like two of the top three in um cahoots with uh with Tatum there so those are the plays though definitely follow me on Twitter at Money Webby I will tweet out obviously to add those names to the to the pool the Celtics pieces if those two players are out Kemba Walker and Jalen Brown but good luck here tonight Hope you enjoyed the video. Drop a like on it if you did. It means a lot. Over 70 likes if we can hit that. Thank you. Also, if you're not subscribed to the channel, definitely hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any more NBA DFS picks. You don't have to choose any of these guys. You can maybe pick one of them that you agree with, but just my thoughts on the slate. Obviously, it is tough for all six of these guys to go off on a nightly basis, but like recently, we've had a few of them go off, a few of them been dud. So if you just agree with me more on some guys rather than other guys you can roll those guys out you don't have to roll all these guys out but just keep in mind these are the plays i like but good luck hope you guys won a ton of money and we'll see you back here again next time